Slap Tech. Which 14 inch laptop is best laptop? Over the course of the past few months, I've reviewed three excellent 14 inch laptops. They're all so great and wonderful, I can't decide which one to keep. So I'm talking out loud and making this video at the same time to determine which laptop is going to stick around for the foreseeable future. Keep in mind this is only for my mobile daily driver. I already have a workstation, the MSI GE66 Raider, which I will use in my office for all things productivity and high performance gaming, and then I've decided to keep my desktop around, which is connected to my TV in the living room for casual gaming and entertainment. Back to the 14 inchers, I'm going to use each category from my reviews and give each laptop a score with a max of 5. This is going to be by no means a fair competition. The awarded points will be based on how important that aspect is to me personally, and the points awarded are arbitrary to me. So if the keyboard isn't that important, maybe they'll all get fives, because they all have keyboards. If the speakers are the most important thing in the world, the best will get a five, and anything less will get a one, because I can't live with anything but the best. Not that anything so extreme is going to happen, but just so you get the point, that's how the scoring will work. First up is the AC adapter. It's not that important to me, so the runners-up are going to score big, and they all have great power bricks anyway. The Latitude and ThinkPad are both tiny, the ThinkPad is tinier, and all three have a huge maximum cord length of 11 to 12 feet. The Asus brick, though, is pretty heavy, and thus can only garner 4 points, while the ThinkPad and Latitude get 5. Battery Life the Latitude is a clear winner with its 15 watt ULV Core i7. This thing stays on all day and lasts longer than the other two competitors while in best performance mode, which offers smooth YouTube playback and decent application performance. The Latitude also carries with it awesome battery life when playing retro games, even Dolphin, which is insane and super important. The Latitude will get a 5, the ThinkPad a 3, and the G14 will get 2. Build Quality This is also going to factor in the looks of these particular laptops, as well as how their build quality adds to their utility. For as little as I've had the Asus since I bought it brand new, the hinges are already starting to creak, which is going to hurt its score. It's also gaudy and not my style. The Latitude would be great by default, but I bought it used and it wasn't as well cared for as the laptops I've owned from day one. The palm rest is worn and irreversibly stained and the top cover does have some wear in the finish and minor scratches. The ThinkPad I bought brand new and is in immaculate condition, plus it's a workstation ThinkPad and was built to the ThinkPad standard. It wins a 5, the Latitude gets a 3, although it would get a 5 if brand new, and the G14 will also get a 3. I'm adding weight as a separate category because the Latitude deserves a bump because of just how light it is. The ThinkPad and G14 are kind of the same, but the Latitude weighs like a feather, and I take notice of that every time I pick it up. So it's going to get an extra 3 points because of it. Another category to add is heat. It's not that important to me, but this comparison can't be taken seriously if it's not included. At only 15 watts, the Latitude clearly puts out the least amount of heat for 5 points. The ThinkPad gets warm, but not annoyingly hot, and it's totally within the realm of reason given the rest of the advantages the much faster CPU brings with it, so it's also a 5. And the G14 gets a 4 because it's a little oven that sits on your lap and blows hot air on your mouse hand. How rude. Holes in the side. I've evolved over the years to use wireless mice, keyboards, and controllers for my mobile PC needs. I need a single USB-A port for my mouse, and Bluetooth suffices for both my game controller and keyboard. To top it off, I crave an SD card reader so I can edit photos away from home. I don't care about USB-C, although they all have it, and I don't care about Thunderbolt, which sucks for the latitude because its dual Thunderbolt 4 ports do it absolutely no good for this category, which might piss off a lot of you out there, but I just can't bring myself to care. Give me a reason to care about Thunderbolt in the comments below if you want. eGPUs are out of the question, not going to spend any money on that. In the end, the Asus and Latitude get 5s, while the ThinkPad gets a 4. While the SD card reader is super important, I'm also okay with carrying an adapter. Guts! 
or in this case the upgradability of all three. They all sport a full-sized NVMe slot, and the Latitude and ThinkPad have 5G modem slots. I don't see myself using a 5G modem, so that's not going to count against the G14. For those of you wondering about putting SSDs in those modem slots, the older Latitude generations can, but neither of the laptops featured here can house extra storage. At least the Latitude is confirmed not to, the ThinkPad is up in the air, but I have my extreme doubts. Besides that, the G14 has one upgradable RAM slot that will accept a 32 gig stick for a total of 40 gigs. So it wins this battle with 5 points because that means I can edit long form 4K video on the go. I still can with the ThinkPad, but really, I shouldn't. The Asus will get a 5, and the Latitude and ThinkPad are getting 3s. The Keyboard I love a good keyboard, and I'm the most spoiled bastard in any first world Banana Republic country for having to pick between these three great contenders. The Latitude and ThinkPad are virtually identical, I love the typing feel of the both of them, plus their backlighting is very classy, and they have dedicated home and end keys. Sure, the ThinkPad has annoying page scrolling keys, but it also feels slightly better than the Latitude, so they're equal with a 5. The G14 gets a 3 because the backlight looks ret. Why have RGB keys on a white laptop? I can only use pastel blue and green with a straight face, everything else looks dumb, the brightness isn't consistent across all the keys, and the right alt key is brighter than everything else. At, le at least it has dedicated home and end keys after I edited a couple of the macro keys to be home and end. So it's got that going for it. You know what? No, it gets a 2 this keyboard. I really don't care that much about touchpads. They're all stupid because nothing has physical keys on the bottom anymore, and because my longing for physical keys is so futile, I'm just defeated about the whole thing. Wow, this got depressing fast. Let's just speed through it. The ThinkPad wins with a 5 because nipple mouse and physical keys on the top. The G14 gets a 4 because glass, but no nub. And the Latitude gets a 3 because the right click is picky, and the very bottom right corner isn't a right click, believe it or not. It's a little over to the left, which is dumb. The display is definitely particular to these three laptops because the ThinkPad and Latitude have other versions with better screens. I don't have those better screens though, so I'll have to judge based on what I've got. The G14 wins hands down because it's high res and high refresh rate. Not only high refresh rate, but high quality high refresh rate. Colors also pop and it gets the brightest. The ThinkPad comes in second with 4 points because I'm a retro gamer at heart, and going over 60 hertz creates hurdles that RetroArch users have to jump through. Everything else about the ThinkPad is just fine. The colors are accurate, it gets plenty bright, and the ghosting is perfectly acceptable. The Latitude is going to trail with 2 because the colors are actually not good on this particular laptop. I don't know if it's because all Latitudes are bad or because this Latitude is bad. I hope it's just this one, but the colors are way too warm, and I'm not talented enough to calibrate it back to normal, if that's even possible. To its credit, the ghosting is noticeably better than the ThinkPad, and sits smack dab in the middle between the ThinkPad and the G14. The speakers are also no contest. The G14 wins. Most bass and most volume while still clear and balanced. I was wrong in the review. It does use software trickery to get more bass and thus loud noises can quiet lesser ones. That being said, these speakers are still very powerful and do good work even after disabling the spatial audio effects. The Latitude comes in a close second for 4 points, they're definitely something I can live with thanks to a well balanced EQ and high volume, they just don't reach as far down into the bass range as the G14. The ThinkPad is just meh with only treble noise, but is overall livable, and it gets 3 points.
webcam isn't something I use every day, but is nice to have. If I were out and about and knew that I would need to be in a Zoom meeting, I'd bring an external webcam regardless. Nonetheless, there can be a winner because the ThinkPads camera is definitely better with a mic that sounds better in a cooperatively quiet atmosphere than the other two. So the ThinkPad gets a 5 and the other two get 4. We're getting into the real meat and potato of things now with system performance. Obviously, the latitude is going to die here. 3,000 points in Cinebench is nowhere near the 10,000 plus the other two competitors achieve. To give credit where credit is due, the latitude offers a smoother experience on the go when the longest battery life is critical, but that scenario is so rare in my life that it's not worth its weight in the score. The G14 benchmarks higher than the ThinkPad, but not by enough to merit giving up an extra point. I did complain in the ThinkPad review that the YouTube playback isn't perfectly smooth in the more efficient power settings, but I ironed that out completely by using Firefox and disabling BitLocker and the TPM. I don't plan on doing important things and handling confidential customer information on my laptop, so those features can go by the wayside. Also. And I'm appealing to the kind heart of the internet here. Please don't hack me. Forget what I said about the G14 keyboard. I take it all back. Latitude gets a negative three and the G14 can have 34 points. Which moves us on to PC gaming performance. If you've watched all three reviews, you should already know the standings, but you may be surprised by the scores. My judgment here is entirely based on what it's always been based on. Snake Pass performance. That's not a joke. If the laptop can render Snake Pass at high details in native res, that's a 5, because anything more than that is merely gravy. Just ask Corn Pop. The G14 will take the W here, naturally, thanks to its powerful, dedicated GPU. It's also what it was made for, so it's kinda cheating, just like how the Democrats cheated the election. However, PC gaming performance isn't as important to me as retro gaming performance. As long as I have a machine at home that can render PC games, I'm good. It's still nice to be able to bring something else besides the MSI GE66 to LAN parties though, so my mobile laptop has to be able to play PC games, which is what the ThinkPad does noticeably better than the Latitude. And I have been bringing the ThinkPad to LAN parties, where it's held its own playing Age of Empires 4 and Deep Rock Galactic. However, it doesn't earn a 5 because it can't do snake pass in high details at native res at 60 frames per second. So it's going to get a 4 and the latitude is going to get a 2 because it can't run Diablo 3 very well at all, which my mobile laptop absolutely has to do, and yes, the ThinkPad can. Which brings us to the last category, retro gaming performance. Now all three applicants can play all of my retro library. Frame rate wise, the only negative mark is the Latitude's Dolphin performance, which lags a little bit behind the ThinkPad and G14. However, the battery life while playing retro games from the Latitude far surpasses the other two, which more than makes up for its subtle addition of stuttering in Dolphin. So the Latitude gets the 5. The ThinkPad will walk away with the 4 because its battery life when playing retro games is respectable and honestly predictable since it's a 40 watt CPU, more than twice that of the Latitude. While the G14 can render everything with flying colors and the screen and speakers make for the best overall experience, the piss poor battery life while playing retro games still drags it down to a 3. Because the main reason why I rely on retro games is that the laptop should stay awake much longer compared to playing PC games. And the winner is... The Razer Blade 14? God damn it, I've been hacked already! Get the f*** out of here. And the winner, with a total possible score of 70, is... The ThinkPad P14S, with a total of 57 points. The Latitude 7420 came in a very close second with 56, and the G14 is not too far away at 54. Just goes to show that they're all strong adversaries, and really I could make do with any one of them, but the ThinkPad P14S wins the day, and the other two laptops will be sold off to the highest bidder. I wrote this and did the scores as I went, thinking out loud into the script and didn't know what the final tallies were going to be until I was done composing it all. Honestly, I really did want the ThinkPad to win, and I feel vindicated that it did, even though it was by an extremely narrow margin. 
Obviously, the final tally isn't up for debate because the weighted results are based on my personal preferences, but feel free to voice your opinions in the comments below as to which of these 14-inch laptops you'd want to keep around for yourself. If you need more data to make a proper assessment, all of my super detailed reviews are linked in the description below. Go ahead and give this video a like and share with anyone you know who's in this exact same predicament with these exact same three laptops. You might just help, well, no one. Who the hell would be in the exact same predicament? Never mind, just share it with everyone. And subscribe! Thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.